Hey guys, in this video we're going to be checking out the LDARC Tiny 6X. This is an updated version of the Tiny 6 that I reviewed maybe it was like six months ago. This is a basically Tiny Whip type of clone. Um, you got your, you know, 31 millimeter propellers here. The I think the total frame size is around 64 millimeters, I believe. Uh, essentially, it's the same drone that the Tiny 6 was, but instead of using the six millimeter motors, they're using the 6x15 millimeter motors. They've now upgraded to the 7x20 millimeter motors, so you get the same prop, same frame, uh, frame size, but you're upgrading to a little bit bigger motors, a little bit more power. Uh, I think they actually are better, you get a little bit more flight time. So it's very similar to the uh, E011 build that I did um, a few weeks back, where I took the E011 and upgraded the flight controller board. Uh, this one still has the um, SP Racing F3 flight controller, so it's got the F F3 um, uh, uh, CPU, but does not have the Betaflight OSD. And uh, the board here is also the same as before, with the video transmitter on the flight controller, and then a uh, separate camera and separate receiver. Whereas on some of the other, um, like the B Core, and also like uh, some of the Acrobees and other tiny whips out there the receivers are actually built into the flight controller, so this is a little bit different. But I believe this is the exact same flight controller board that was in the Tiny 6. And since it's based off the SV Racing F3 board, the gyro is the older 6050 gyro, whereas uh, the newer boards out there have the um, Omnibus F3 target, and it still has the F3 CPU, but they use the Betaflight OSD, and they have the newer uh, MPU 6000 gyro. So, does affect the tuning a little bit. Um, so regarding the tune, I didn't flash the newer firmware in this. It's running uh, Betaflight 301. Uh, I just updated the PIDs because the gains I thought were a little bit low. I'll go ahead and I'll put my uh, PIDs up on the screen here and you guys can just update that. It flies really well on the PIDs that I put in here, so you just need to update the PIDs. Um, obviously plug it into the computer via the USB port and then you should be good to go. Now, I have the advanced edition of the Tiny 6X here. Uh, they do come with different receivers. So you have XM, which is a Free Sky, uh, FM800, DSM2, I think FM800 is a Futaba, then DSM2 is Spectrum, I think RX800 Pro is also Futaba, and then the one I have is the FlySky RX2A, which is a, a FlySky receiver, and they also have one without the receiver. And the receiver, as on the uh, previous uh, version of the 6, Tiny 6, is on the bottom here. This is where all the receivers are going to be. Now, uh, in terms of the video transmitter, the video transmitter is built into the flight controller, and then you're going to be using uh, these buttons here. I'm trying to point them out. They're kind of in, you can probably stick a small screwdriver or something in there to go cycle through your bands and channels, and then there's a couple of lights that will indicate what your bands and channels are. There's only 16 channels available, so you can go one, one through uh, one, and then look at the chart that's in the manual to figure out what channel you should tune to. So I mentioned before, this is the advanced edition. This comes with a ton of stuff here. You get this really nice case. Uh, you get a little compartment here on the top. This is where you're going to get your instructions. Um, you have spare canopies and spare props, so you could mix and match your colors if you want. Um, change out the color from red to different colors here and you get some additional battery connectors if you uh, happen to need those. This case does come with a built-in charger into the case so um, there's actually a plug here for an XD60. You can plug in up to a 4S LiPo to uh, power up the charger or you could use a uh, USB cable to say like a power bank or some other um, like a USB charger device like a phone charger for example to power the charger. And then the charger is actually inside the case. So you can see here you have six different ports for charging. You can charge either the older uh, 1.25 millimeter connector char uh, batteries or the two millimeter batteries. And there's a little heat sink here. So this is uh, built into the case. You can't actually take it out. Although you probably might be able to if you unscrew some screws here if you wanted to use it separately. But it's uh, very convenient to just use the charger within the case. You can store your tiny weapon here. And then you have a whole bunch of slots for extra batteries and they do include uh, three batteries. You get the LDRC uh, high volt 250 milliamp hour 3060C uh, battery, so pretty good battery. And the last thing that they include here is this uh, very interesting looking uh, battery uh, battery checker 
so you can plug in the battery on this side or this side and then it'll light up and then based on the lights it'll tell you what the the voltage of the battery is and so I'll go ahead and I'll demonstrate that real quick okay so I just plugged in the battery here and you can see I have three lights so according to this little chart we're at, at about 3.9 volts so it's a very handy checker for checking your batteries and so you can see if you have a fully charged battery or a partially charged battery it's a very good uh, little checker here Okay, so overall I think this is a pretty good value for what you get here, the case, the batteries, all the little accessories, plus the charger and the battery checker. This thing flies pretty good, uh, the frame is very sturdy, I crashed it quite a bit and uh, held up pretty well. I do like uh, the tiny whips on the 7mm motors uh, over the 6mm motors, I think they do fly better. I think one of the downsides is it doesn't have the Betaflight OSD or the newer uh, MQ6000 gyro, and I wish that the receiver was built in to the board instead of um, the video transmitter. Um, it does make, I think, this a little bit heavier than my build that I did for the E011. If this comes in at 26 grams versus the uh, one I built was around 25 and a half grams. So it's half a gram more, but you know, this comes already fully built, comes with a bunch of accessories. I believe uh, this combo here was about 90 or 95 dollars. So you can check the link, uh, prices do change uh, from time to time, but, and they're also coupons and promotions and stuff like that too so you get the price down if you are interested in this uh, but overall i think this is a pretty good value for what you get if you want to get a tiny whip you don't want to do building or soldering or anything like that obviously you just need a radio and goggles and then you can go off and charge some batteries and fly some tiny whips so i'll go ahead and i'll show you some flight demo footage if you have any questions let me know and i'll talk to you guys in the next video